Howdy folks, it's Donnie once again, and in this video I'd like to give an overview of why the Linux world is switching to System D and why you should also consider switching to System D. Now, there are a lot of videos on YouTube which go into excruciating detail about explaining System D, but I'm not going to do that here. I just want to give a quick overview so that you can kind of start getting your head wrapped around it, and then you can learn more about it later when you need to. So in this video, all I want to do is explore why System D. Well, first off, what is System D? Well, it's a new kind of init system which replaces the old-fashioned SysV init, and it also replaces the upstart that was introduced by Ubuntu. It was created at Red Hat, and its chief architect is Leonard Potring. But it's also very controversial. We go to talk to System D with people. A lot of times you're going to end up with this. It's going to be the same scenario you get when you try to discuss what distro is best for Linux beginners to use, right? I mean, you're just going to get so much immaturity. There, I don't know why it is, but there are it's just one of those deals where emotions run very, very high when it's being discussed. I mean, you've got people out there who are just rabidly anti-System D. They don't want anything to do with it, and they think it should not even exist. They think it should be banned. But it's important to note that the criticisms of System D have more to do with what people believe about the Linux and Unix philosophy than about whether or not it works. And I'm not going to get into the specific arguments against System D here, but you can Google for them if you really want to know. So for now, let's just look at why the world is switching to System D. Well, for one thing, faster boot up times because your daemons start in parallel. It's easier for package developers because it's no longer necessary to figure out the order in which the daemon should start. Because under sysv init, you had to have the daemons start up in a specific order in order for the machine to be able to boot up correctly. So because of that, we got no more numbered S and K links to deal with. And then instead of controlling the daemons with complex init scripts, you now have simpler to read, simpler to configure configuration files for each of the daemons. And those new configuration files can do more for you than what these old-fashioned init scripts can do. For example, you can now configure your daemons to automatically restart upon a daemon crash. And then you can also have daemons start and stop dynamically as needed. So this is now taking the place of the old Znet D. System D also provides better system security because, for example, the audit D daemon, which records security events for the operating system, cannot be stopped or restarted by any user on a system D system, and that includes the root user. So if a hacker were to break into your system, he wouldn't be able to cover his tracks by shutting down the auditing system, even if he were to gain root privileges. The system would just not allow them to do that. And also, every process now runs in its own C group by default. And think of a C group as kind of a jail for each process. It makes it simpler to control resource usage for each process because you can control the amount of memory, the amount of CPU resources, the amount of I.O. resources that each one of your processes can get with these C groups. And the C groups also provide better process separation, which makes it harder for hackers to come in and exploit the system. And a really big benefit is you now have more consistent administration. Because with the old SysV init, every distro family had its own set of commands and management utilities. So the Debian family commands for enabling and disabling daemons were different from the Red Hat family commands, which were different from the Slackware family commands. And 
then we're not even counting the ones like Gen 2 and, and all them, which were different yet. And then there was Upstart, which was brought out by the Ubuntu developers. And I never did fully figure that one out because I just never really worked with Ubuntu server that much. And yeah, I used Ubuntu on the desktop and using it for years, but you know, with the desktop, you really don't have a lot of need to deal with the daemons. Now with system D, daemon management commands are now consistent across all Linux distros that have adopted system D. Yeah, some of the daemon names might differ, but the commands themselves are the same. So all in all, system D does bring with it a lot of benefits. But what if you fall into the anti-system D camp? What if you just do not want to use system D? Well, if you're a desktop user, it's not a big problem. There are still several distro families that don't use system D. So members of the Slackware family, members of the Gen 2 family don't use it. And also you have Antix Linux, which does not use it. And Antix is derived from Debian. And uh, there are actually a couple different Debian-based uh, or Debian-derived distros that don't use it. So you still have those choices out there if you are a desktop user. Now, in the enterprise, however, if you're a server administrator, you probably are not going to have a choice because the big players in the enterprise server market have all switched to System D. So members of the Red Hat family, the SUSE family, the Ubuntu family, all have switched to System D. Now, you can use non-System D distros you know, for servers, but more than likely, you're not going to convince your boss to switch your entire network over to Slackware or Gen 2 just to be able to get rid of System D, okay? It's just not going to happen. So, the bottom line is if you're a desktop user, it doesn't really matter which init system you use. If using System D goes against your conscience, then by all means, use a non-System D distro, and I won't be mad at you, okay? That's your choice to make. But if you want to become a system administrator, you definitely want to learn System D. Better yet, let me rephrase that, you definitely need to learn System D, because in an enterprise setting, you are not going to be able to escape it. And besides, once you learn System D, once you find out its capabilities, and once you find out how much easier it does make your system administration, you just may learn to like it. So that's all for now. I thank you for viewing. And if you like my videos, be sure to like and subscribe.